Liverpool v Manchester City could be decided by what happens off the ball Karen Carney. There is a very easy way to make good players look like world beaters, give them time and space. Liverpool and Manchester City are piled high with quality that can rip apart any opposition if allowed to play on their own terms, so it will be important for both sides to execute a perfect pressing game when they meet at Anfield on Sunday. The match could be won by the work done off the ball. City showed how to do this against Chelsea and Liverpool will be careful not to fall into similar traps. City had 62% possession, but their pressing efficiency was also much better than Chelsea's. City disrupted their opponent's plan to play out from the back thanks to the relentless nature of their attackers. This is a tough week for City, who play three intense games in the space of nine days, this game coming after fixtures at Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain. They have injury problems, and given the intensity of their play, they could risk wilting in the later stages. It takes a lot of physical energy and mental concentration to be repeatedly in the right place to press effectively. City have conceded a solitary goal in six league games, receiving great credit for the defence. The pressing at the front makes things easier for the defenders because they know where the next pass is going from the opposition, allowing them to protect the area in front of them and quickly nullify the threat. It is draining spending 90 minutes pressing and people forget you have to come down from that. If you have an 8pm game, you will not be coming down until 3 or 4 in the morning. Recovery starts the following day, but then you are preparing for the next game, so training is really short, and managing your mind and body in these intense periods is imperative. We will see throughout City's season they will go for the press in peaks and troughs, because no one can sustain it over a long period. They are so good in possession against weaker teams that they do not need to press them excessively, meaning City can save the relentless press for the top sides. Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, like Alex Ferguson in the past, will have had a strategy to attack this crucial week. They will have had perfect scenarios in their minds, though neither side have come through unscathed, with City losing in Paris and Liverpool dropping points at Brentford. This may divert the managers from the original plan, but they have fantastic players at their disposal and their flexibility is crucial. Neither will be afraid to adjust at the last minute if they think it will aid their team in the short term. Overloading attacks on the left has been a useful tool for City as they try to get Jack Grealish into the game as much as possible. Chelsea struggled to cope with the combination of Grealish and Joao Cancelo, and with the news Trent Alexander-Arnold is out it would not be a surprise if City repeated their trick. Brentford showed how to get at Liverpool, scoring three goals against a defence that had conceded once in their previous five league matches. They saw things were not working because Liverpool's press was incredibly effective, so they got round it by going more direct. Ivan Toni and Brian Bumo caused Virgil van Dijk and Joel Matip problems thanks to their link-up play when receiving the ball from the back. City's philosophy is to play out from defence and through teams to create chances, but Guardiola will not be afraid to mix things up for the sake of victory. We have seen for a number of seasons how Ederson can send a booming long pass to the highest attacking point to catch out a defence. I would not be surprised if Ferran Torres or Raheem Sterling started down the middle to give City the opportunity to stretch the Liverpool backline, just as Brentford did. Liverpool will be aware of how City like to dominate the midfield areas against their rivals at the top. Chelsea were unable to cope there because Matteo Kovacic and Jorginho 